Hi everyone, today I'm showing you a comparison video between handheld and using a gimbal. We're going to go through some simple shots, some much more complicated shots, and using monopod to get those tricky shots as well. And we're going to do scores throughout the whole video to see which one's better than the other in various situations. And at the end, I'm going to give you three examples of after post stabilization so you can see which one you think is the phone and which one you think is done by gimbal. This is a very exciting video for you guys, isn't it? Tilt. Without stabilization, handheld is basically a no-go. It's really unusable. But once you use stabilization, whether it's in Filmic Pro or just using a modern phone one, it's really, really great. And you can create nice cinematic moments. As you can imagine with the gimbal, it's a very similar story. And they are quite equal in this actually. When using tilts for both handheld and gimbal, the results were almost identical. So when you're doing basic shots like this, you can use handheld completely. You can change the speed as well with a joystick on the gimbal to do a bit more of a slow reveal shot to make it a bit more cinematic, create more of an ominous feel. You can do that with handheld, it'll probably be a bit more tricky, but with a gimbal you can certainly do that, so it's pretty equal. Pan. Panning was surprisingly difficult with handheld, going from left to right trying to keep that nice straight line 180 degrees completely was much harder than I thought. On the first attempt it just didn't really work and it looked a little bit like I was drunk. Using the gimbal it worked first time nice and smooth and with that 3 axis gimbal with the Osmo Mobile 3 you can get a really nice pan very very easily and create nice effects and reveal locations too. On the second attempt with a handheld I really got used to it this time and tried to just level my feet on the ground and stay nice and steady and use myself as one with the phone and it worked much better. Tracking. With tracking shots handheld, it was actually very, very simple. Doing that ninja walk, heel to toe, heel to toe, you can get really great shots. And whilst my first attempt was a little bit bumpy, I started to improve it within the next shot or two, and it worked really, really well. These kind of simpler shots really work with handheld, and you don't need to spend loads of money on a gimbal to make it work. You can see here on a second shot, it was way, way smoother. And also, once we add post stabilization to these, it's going to look even better. With a gimbal on the Osmo Mobile 3, you can get really nice smooth shots pretty easily, really. And as long as you're doing that nice slow pace kind of walk, you can kind of eradicate that little bump in your walk as well, so you can get nice smooth shots. Tracking side to side handheld was a little bit tricky. I tried to use the rail to kind of guide me to keep it straight, but if anything, it made it look worse. So try not to get rails and stuff like that in your shots, but it does work really, really well handheld. With the Osmo Mobile 3, it's a little bit easier because you can kind of angle it, but there's an area where it's more difficult because it's an Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal. It kind of drifts slightly side to side, so you have to kind of anticipate where it might move to to keep your shot straight. But if you kind of don't get this tracking shot with a rail in it and you lift it up like this, you can see it looks so much smoother and it works really well. So handheld or gimbal, tracking shots are pretty equal between the two. So let's say you want to go for a more tricky shot. If you want to get something closer to the surface of the water, you want to go a bit more handheld, just clip it into your monopod, get it nice and low to the water and try and keep it as straight as possible. The weight of the monopod all at the end of it does help keep it kind of level and you can get nice close to the surface water shots that you would never ever guess that you're just holding it on a monopod. It looks like you'd have to be in the water with it, but you don't at all. And even though it's handheld, you can still get really lovely shots with this type of thing. With a gimbal, it's a bit of a different story with that kind of weight right at the end of it hanging over the water. It's a bit more of a struggle to keep it straight at first, so I was getting some quite shaky shots. But after about the third attempt, I was getting it really nice and smooth. And again, with that three axis gimbal, you can get nice swooping shots in the water as well and get nice and low to the surface, creating something a bit more cinematic. So even though it's quite equal, the gimbal wins this one. Uneven surfaces. I doing in my life. This surface was incredibly bumpy, it's wood chip and the ground itself is bumpy as well so there's basically no flat level ground on this area at all. So handheld it was a bit of a no-go particularly on the first attempt. Trying to do the ninja walk it just doesn't work even with stabilization it was very very tricky. I think if you've got an iPhone 12 or one of the new modern uh, Android phones this could work quite well but it just was a no-go for me and the second attempt really didn't work out much better at all and when you look at the gimbal you're going to see why the gimbal was so much better. Still using that heel to toe, heel to toe, the gimbal absolutely killed handheld on a bumpy surface. It was still able to get that nice smooth shot 
and even though I was trying to anticipate the bumps, it's really impossible to do so on this kind of ground. It worked really, really well, and on a lot of YouTube videos you see people on nice smooth paths doing these kind of gimbal shots, but when you're on a bumpy surface, it's a different game completely. And with the gimbal, it absolutely killed it on bumpy surfaces, so it's way better than the handheld. Turning corners. So with cornering, it was really, really difficult handheld, but it's basically impossible. As you'll see from this shot here, every time I turned, it kind of jerked the camera, even though that's not what I was physically doing. So when I turn to the right, it kind of just aggressively pulls it to the right, step by step, rather than doing a nice, smooth motion. And the second attempt really wasn't any better, it's still jerking around, it's still really difficult to get it, so for handheld and cornering, it just was a no-go. With the gimbal though, it handled it in its stride. The Osmo Mobile 3 with the free axis really turns smoothly like butter, and as you turn to the right, you can see here there's no jerking, there's no aggressive moves, it just works really well. So for these trickier shots, you're going to need a gimbal, and for tracking shots as well, whether it's a film or a music video, or you know, you're know you filming a hobby, something like that, these are really great gimbals to use, and you're going to get nice smooth shots, and it's really cinematic, and it gives yourself, again, a higher budget feel, spending a little bit on a gimbal. Reveal. Now for reveals, these more simple type shots, the handheld worked really well, you're only taking a little step to the left to the right, where it's revealing from the side or above or below, so it works very very smoothly. And as you can see from behind this tree, you get a really nice shot here, revealing the whole location, and you would never know it was just handheld. The benefit with the gimbal is you can actually take maybe a step or two more if you need to, because it's going to give you that extra smoothness with extra ease. And even though there's a slight bump to start off with, you can get a really nice reveal with a gimbal, but it's similar to the handheld, so I think it's pretty equal. And in going to different locations, making sure that I was getting some consistency with this, it was a bit tricky at first with the handheld, and then the second attempt, you can see here, it was way smoother and it looks like it was used with a gimbal, so you don't need to spend loads of money again to get nice simple shots. The gimbal here, it took me a couple of goes to get it right, the first time it was a bit shaky, same as the handheld really, and then when I went back in behind the wall for a second attempt, it was really, really buttery smooth and it looks so high budget and professional. Revealing through fences and things like that, it was the same story, so these are really equal handheld and gimbal. When you're trying to do reveal simple shots, you really don't need to be carrying around a gimbal at all. Just learn how to use your camera and you can get smooth shots. Push-ins. Push-in's another fairly simple shot. I was using the automatic focus pour Filmic Pro to do this. If you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link on screen now for you. And again, with handheld versus gimbal, the simpler shots like this are actually very, very equal. Monopod shots. Achieving a nice establishing shot, really epic establishing shot, with a monopod and gimbal or just a phone is very difficult. So with just the handheld clip and the phone in that on top of a monopod, this was really hard to get. The first attempt wasn't too bad by the end, but the beginning was too bumpy. On a second attempt, it worked really well. And you can see here, as I line up for the ending, that looks absolutely epic and the clouds just kind of pouring across those buildings at the back. It works superbly. On the gimbal it works really well too because you get that nice weight at the end of the gimbal to kind of balance out against your own weight. And you just have to be careful of the gimbal again having a bit of a mind of its own wanting to drift so you have to kind of counteract what you think it's going to do to get the nicest shot. And here again, really beautiful shot with the gimbal on a monopod. And you can use this to get really nice almost Hollywood like effects with your gimbal and smartphone so it works super super well and just balance it out with your arm up the monopod so you can get those kind of shots. So for this one, again, I'm gonna have to give it to a gimbal, although you can get a lot of these shots really well on a smartphone just using handheld too. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Vlogging. Smartphone gimbals really are the go-to for YouTube vlogging setups. Whether you're doing something like this for a YouTube channel or you're doing holiday vlogs, that kind of thing, getting smooth shots is really important. And with a gimbal with the three axis that you get with the Osmo Mobile 3 that I'm using here, for example, you can get so many different angles. You can follow yourself, you can follow a friend, you know, doing those kind of nice behind shots, walking into the sunsets, that kind of stuff. And they're very easy to attach sound to as well. So you've got the Rode Wireless Go like this, you can attach it to it and it doesn't hamper the gimbal in any way. You can still get really good sound. So we've seen that the smartphone gimbals like this are really good for vlogging. What about if you want to go completely handheld? 
So here I'm just using the phone as normal. You can't actually use within Filmic Pro stabilization if it's in selfie mode. So that way you're not gonna get the kind of smooth battery shots that you get with the gimbal. It still works quite well. So if you're on a budget and you can't afford a gimbal, you're just starting out. I think it's the perfectly legitimate way to start doing your vlogs and vlogging your holidays, that kind of thing. For sound at the moment, I'm using the Rode uh, Video Mic Me L, which is plugged into the lightning jack, which I actually thought would get into the shot, but as you can see, it's not in the shot at all. So whilst the gimbal clearly is the better option, this is still pretty decent as well, but I'm gonna have to give this one to the gimbal. Do let me know in the comments section below whether you got all three clips correct on that guessing game, whether you knew if it's handheld or gimbal or not, I'd love to see if you could tell the difference. Now the main takeaway from this for me is if you're just starting out and you're learning the basics, handheld is the way to go. You don't need a gimbal, you really don't. It costs a lot more money obviously, and when you get to more complicated shots, this really does come into its own. But to start out, just learn the camera shots, the basics with handheld, and you'll be good to go. And then you can work your way up to more complicated stuff like a gimbal. Now of course when we saw those monopod shots over the river, things like that, that are really tricky, pan shots when you're going up in the air with the monopods and tracking in corners as well and around corners, this really comes into its own a gimbal so you probably will need this eventually but you don't need it straight away. If you've got any questions about today's video, anything you'd like to know or tips that you want to share about handheld filmmaking with a smartphone or gimbal then hit that in the comments below, let me know what you thought of the video and guys I will see you on the next one, thanks for joining me, bye bye.